getting enough sleep is important and affects our overall health, right? Does it affect our longevity? Absolutely. Even when we're talking about this concept of intermittent fasting, the reason we talk about it so much is because it improves the quality of our sleep. Oh, really? Because we sleep better and get more of the anti-aging benefits of sleep when we're not digesting food at the same time when we're sleeping. So we want to eat a dinner that allows to be finished digesting so we can get as much, so that eight hours we want to get at night or seven to eight hours in bed or seven to nine hours, whatever person needs. We want to get as many of those hours possible in the non-digestive state. So that's when it, because that's when we go most repair and the anti-aging effects happen. Oh, wow. So it's actually very important for our longevity then. And that's when the anti-aging happens. So that will lead us to a longer, healthier life. When you sleep, that's when the weight loss happens. That's when the anti-aging happens. Those are the factors leading to a longer life. Is getting good quality sleep and the quality of the sleep you're getting to rest the body is enhanced when you don't have a full stomach. And so many people eat late at night and they're digesting food half the night. So what about your timing of sleep too? Does it really help to follow their circadian rhythm? Yes. There is a lot of science to show that sleeping when it's dark out and waking with, with light is, important, is a helpful asset to longevity. So that means we sleep better when we go to sleep earlier as opposed to going to sleep at 12 midnight, 1, 2 in the morning and sleeping the morning hours when it's light outside. It's better to, be, to go to bed earlier, like 8, 9, or 10, and then get up at, at 5, 6, or 7 mm. so you can wake up and get the morning light. Because we had, we did mention in one of the podcasts that the morning light between that. seven and nine is most helpful. And if you're sleeping through seven and nine, you're not getting the benefit of that morning light. And, and if we're talking about people who have trouble sleeping, insomniacs, or people who just have difficulty falling asleep, here's what, how we repair that, is getting morning light, getting out in the sun, getting up at the same, and going to bed early at the same time every day to get your body to, to build that rhythm of hormones, melatonin secretion, and the end of melatonin, because morning light stops melatonin secretion, enables the body to consolidate the melatonin and get it more concentrated at night and not allow it to be secreted into daylight hours all day long. You get in a low light environment and then you have low melatonin at night because you produce too much melatonin during the day. Is melan- melatonin a hormone or? Yes. It is. So that hormone really does regulate our sleep and helps us go to sleep and wake up. Correct. And it's one of the reasons why I do not recommend people take melatonin to go to sleep because if you're regularly taking melatonin, certainly occasionally in jet lag or you have some problem where you want to get to bed and it could help you, but on a regular basis, it'll stop your own bodies over time. If you take it regularly, it'll stop your own production of melatonin. And that's not great for your health to stop your own production or to re- reduce your own production. And so t- supplementing it is not beneficial long-term. So you're trying to give people just as you do in diet, the protocol to help your body regulate and do these things that you want it to do naturally. Exactly. And that's also where, so morning light and also exercise and even some strength training exercises, some weightlifting pulleys doing, because that also helps people produce more of the hormones to help you sleep better at night. If you regularly exercise with some muscular stress, you know, and I'm saying that um, do something every day, even if it's for 10 minutes. If you just have 10 minutes, do some push-ups, do some crunches, do some, you know, slow squats, do some, do something because that'll also, you know, and do, do different body parts. Um, cause people just walk and they think they're exercising, which is good, better than nothing. It's great. But I want them to do those additional things. So we've already talked about, um, going to bed at the same time every night, having a very dark room, not having a night light or a, or a, television light or something going on. A lot of people fall asleep with the TV on and half the night the TV is, is going on in their room showing, putting light through their eyelids, which is not good for their long-term health either. So they have to make sure they, um, they shut everything down when they go to sleep at night. Well, your body too, I've, I've been really tapping into this. Your body picks up on these very subconscious noises, distractions constantly. So if you think about the TV being on, the light, what you're listening to is helping your mind race. That's not peaceful sleep. That's not quality sleep. It's right. It's lowering the quality of your sleep and it's interfering with the right hormones that should be secreting dur- during sleep. So yeah, some people, it's unfortunate they have to have a job where they work late at night, but they should have they have to go to make a very dark room for themselves if they're sleeping during the day and then use some brighter light, like a, like a, um, a therapeutic light and to make a therapy to duplicate more sunshine during the day because they shouldn't be living in a dark environment 24 hours a day. Right. They should try to, if they have to work at midnight, they should try to 
uh, um, make an environment that's like getting light all day long, getting light a lot of the day, and then sleeping well in the very dark room at night.